stand by. We are about to begin. Good day, everyone, and welcome to the Voter Survey Poll Conference Call. Today's conference is being recorded, and now at this time, it is my pleasure to turn the conference over to Mr. Toby Chahuri. Please go ahead, sir. Hi. Thanks for uh, joining our call today. Today's call is sponsored by the uh, Asian American Justice Center and the APIA Vote. Uh, it's a news teleconference to announce the results of a major new political poll of Asian American voters. It's a, the poll is the first to examine how the nation's fastest growing racial group is going to cast their votes in this year's elections, and, and it goes through uh, an assortment of several different political issues. Uh, we're going to hear from three speakers today. We'll hear from Celinda Lake, who's the principal at Lake Research, Research Partners. We'll hear from Mi Mua, who's the president and executive director at the Asian American Justice Center. And we'll hear from Christine Chen, who is the Acting Executive Director at API of Vote. A couple of quick uh, notes on ground rules. Uh, you know, we all know that Asian American Pacific Islanders are on the rise, that there's an unprecedented amount of independent political activity that's happening within the community and outside of the formal campaigns. Uh, and folks are building a movement that's going to force changes that might otherwise never take place. But I just want to make sure that folks know that uh, the groups involved in this poll are nonpartisan and are not affiliated with uh, with any of the presidential campaigns, with any of the uh, political parties, um, uh, FYI. But right at the gates, also know that you can press star 1 on your number pad at any time during the presentation. I highly recommend that you do it before we hear brief statements from our speakers uh, to be able to ask questions. Um, but other than that, uh, uh, my name is Toby. You have my email address if you have any other questions while the presentations are going on. So with that, let's hear from our, our first speaker. I'm going to hand it over to uh, Celinda Lake. Celinda? Great. Well, thank you very much. And um, I also want to introduce David Merman, who is actually the head of this team, and Chilpa Grover, who did uh, a lot of the work on it. And we are very, very excited because this is uh, really the first of its kind comprehensive look at the Asian American voter community, and particularly in this election, where it can play a very, very major role. As Toby said, we did a survey of, if we look at slide two, we did a survey of 713 Asian American voters nationwide, and these were registered voters. And then we did an oversample of 100 voters in Florida, Nevada, Virginia, and Illinois looking at some of the key states where Asian American voters can really make a difference. The sampling error overall is 3.7%, and the data is hot off the presses. If we look at slide three, there are a number of very interesting points here. The first point isn't actually from the survey, uh, but it's from the census data and just trying to uh, help everyone situate this really important voting group that, frankly, has been largely ignored in reports about the changing demographics of the voters and the key swing groups of voters. Asian Americans are a very important and fast-growing racial group, and, in fact, they have grown the most, 46%, since 2000 um, for Asian alone or Asian Americans in combination with some other race. There are more than 17 million people today in America who identify as Asian American. And they are playing a very major role in some states that are obvious, like Hawaii, where they're 57% of the population, California, where they're 15%. But what may be paying less attention is the high growth rates in some very key swing states and some of the states that are really non-traditional gateway cities and states, Nevada, Georgia, North Carolina. Of course, the Asian American community is not monolithic. Uh, it's a very diverse community, and we made a point of sampling all of these populations, and we provided some data in the back for you on different demographic groups uh, and different communities within the Asian American community. What we're concentrating on here, though, is the overall trends in the population overall. And um, Asian Americans, fast-growing, fast growing in terms of their uh, percentage that they will play in the electorate and in the population in the future as well as today. So despite the growing trends and the growing presence, uh, and there are some officeholders obviously that are coming out of the Asian American community, 
we're seeing that Asian Americans are lagging behind in political participation and visibility. And we see here for the first time uh, people being asked, actually, if they were contacted by the political parties, and we're finding that uh, Asian Americans have not been contacted by the party. And that's true even in states where they play uh, they play a very major role, Nevada, Virginia, Florida, where they could be really determinative in close elections of who wins the presidential contest. And Asian Americans, because of reapportionment, play a very, very major role in a number of the congressional races and a number of key Senate races as well. Interestingly, we see that the participation rates of Asian Americans have been increasing. If we compare 2004 to 2008, the participation rate went from 44% to 48%. This data also suggests that we're poised for another potential increase uh, because this is a survey of registered Asian Americans, not everyone in the population, but voters who are registered. And 83% of them said they were certain to vote. 50% said they were more enthusiastic than usual about these elections. If we look at slide four, as we mentioned, this is a group of voters largely ignored by both parties, and that is particularly true of independents uh, within the Asian American uh, community where uh, less than a fifth have been contacted by the parties, and yet these are the key swing voters. Even among the partisans, um, few of the partisans in each party have been contacted by their own party, and we'll see that data in a moment. Uh, Asian Americans tend to uh, vote Democratic right now, but there are a very, very significant uh, proportion of Asian American voters who are up for grabs and swing. 31% are independent uh, in the terms of their party identification. We also find that while Romney not supported by that many Asian Americans right now, part of the issue is uh, almost a third of Asian Americans do not have a firm impression of him. So this is a group of voters that, while leaning Democratic right now, are definitely have significant targets for both parties and shouldn't be taken for granted by either party. Most Asian American registered voters speak English well, uh, but a majority also speak another language at home. Uh, and part of that is rooted in heritage. 58% of Asian American voters were born in another country and 69% of those born in the U.S. had a parent born in another country. We find that in-language assistance could increase participation, particularly with Chinese, Korean, and Vietnamese Americans over 50. Asian Americans right now say the Democratic Party is doing a better job than the Republicans on a number of issues, including values. Uh, but there are a significant number who say um, they don't, Think, uh, they're not sure which party is better on key economic and key foreign policy issues. So, again, this is a key voting group not being paid enough attention to by the press and not being paid enough attention to by either party and uh, really opportunities for both parties here uh, to make a difference. On slide six, we'll give you this as background. This is really just giving the overall demographics of the population that we're talking about. Uh, but let's start on slide seven, um, where we see, first of all, 58% of Asian Americans born in another country. This is of registered voters. And 69% of those born in the United States have a parent who was born in another country. You also see the broad range of age of immigration to the United States. On slide eight, uh, we asked a very interesting question about how to reach the Asian American community. And this is a community that campaigns really need to tailor uh, their communication to. So we see still television dominating <coughs> the way that Asian Americans are getting political information. That's true for most groups of voters. But we see very, very high Internet use, and 40% uh, saying the Internet and social media is a major news source uh, for them. This is one of the best populations, actually, to and cheapest to reach online. We also see 32% uh, relying on newspapers, and newspapers are a very important source of information, something that we see is really diminishing 
in other um, uh, communities. We see only 10% say they're relying on friends and family. This is lower than a lot of other communities. And uh, campaign advertising uh, makes a lot of difference in the Asian American community, and campaigns can make a big difference. So if that's the kind of lay of the land, what do Asian American voters care about? Uh, what are they focused on? And if we look at slide 10, we see that Asian Americans are more positive about the direction of the country, both for themselves and for the country overall, than the population overall of all American voters. But they're divided. So they're more positive but divided. On slide 11, where they resemble other voters, is they're just being discouraged about the economy. Only 19% say the economy is in excellent or good shape. 48% say just fair, and 31% say poor. Uh, that's slightly more positive than the population overall, but even though they rank the direction of the country a net positive, their perceptions of the economy resemble very much voters overall. On slide 12, um, Asian American voters are very, very personally positive about um, President Obama, 73% give him a positive favorability rating. That's very high. And that is much higher than their partisan identification, which is only 53% Democratic. And this is one of the most positive groups uh, in terms of their personal favorability toward the president. And not a lot of variation by subgroup in terms of that favorable feeling. Everyone in the Asian American community knows uh, the president. On the other hand, uh, we see much more divided feelings about the president's job performance. And this is one of the groups where we have the most dramatic difference between personal favorability and job performance. So <clears throat> Asian American voters split on the president's job performance, 49% positive, 49% negative. And while every subgroup of Asian American voters is uh, solidly positive personally about the president, we do see more disagreement about um, the job performance of the president. We provide those numbers in the back. But it ranges from 63% of Indian American uh, voters being positive about the president's job performance to a majority of Filipino, Japanese American, Vietnamese American, and Korean American um, being uh net negative. So much more difference in terms of assessments of job performance than in terms of personal favorability. If we look at the next slide, 53% uh, of Asian Americans identify as Democratic, 16% identify as Republican, and 31% identify as Independent or don't identify with either party. So there is definitely, while this group is leaning Democratic, there are definitely voters that need to be talked to by both parties in terms of for the Democrats maximizing their vote here and for the Republicans gaining their vote here. On slide 14, you see the president's favorability, 73%. You see Mitt Romney's favorability, 44% unfavorable, 27% favorable. 29% of all Asian American voters say they don't know enough about Mitt Romney to give him a rating. And here we see, again, very, very big differences. We have 38 to 41 percent of Vietnamese American and Korean Americans who don't know very much about um, Romney, and it falls to 20 to 21 percent of Chinese American and Indian Americans who say they don't know enough. So not much variation in terms of knowledge or favorability about the president, but very, very large um, variation in terms of feelings about Mitt Romney and knowledge about Mitt Romney. You see the uh, feelings about the leaders also reflected <coughs> in the feelings about the party. Uh, Two-thirds of Asian American voters positive about Democrats, a majority negative about the Republican Party. But as you'll see later, there's uh, definitely an argument for Republicans to make to these voters. On slide 15, we have 59% of Asian Americans voting for the president, 13% voting for Romney, and 27% undecided. Again, we see a very, very broad range 
in terms of vote for the president. So Indian Americans are at the top with 76% voting for the president, Japanese Americans 65%. On the other end, we have 57% of Filipinos, 52% of Vietnamese Americans, and 40% of Korean Americans voting for the president. So this is not a monolithic vote, um, even though it leans Democratic and definitely targeting for both parties to do here. If we look at 516, we see in 2008 that 56% voted for Obama, 14% for McCain, 14% said they voted for someone else or didn't remember, wouldn't tell us, and then 17% who said they did not vote. So um, gains to be made here for both parties. Side 17, we see 52% say they would vote for the Democrat in the congressional generic congressional ballot, 17% for the Republican, but again, 31% undecided. Um, this vote, uh, if you combine the undecided, could easily go either way, and there's huge variance here and huge opportunities for both parties. On side 18, we see that the Democrats have a very strong um, advantage among Asian American voters on values and fairness. They also have substantial advantages on health care, education, and immigration. And in all of those cases, we see a solid majority uh, favoring the Democrats over the Republicans. But if we turn to slide 19, um, the issues that are really dominating the concern of the voters, foreign policy and the economy, we see that advantage is, has diminished, and we see very, very substantial numbers of voters, over a third to almost half, saying, I'm not sure which party is doing a better job here, or I don't see any difference. So on the economy and the foreign policy issues, uh, including the deficit, uh, really uh, this vote uh, is open to conversations from both parties. On slide 20, uh, we asked a very interesting question. How would you feel about a candidate who had strongly anti-immigrant views? And then how would you feel about a candidate with strongly anti-Asian views? And, of course, there have been some memorable controversies uh, lately in this regard. Uh, Asian American voters lean against a candidate with anti-immigrant views, uh, but it's not overwhelming. They would strongly vote against someone who had anti-Asian views, however. And uh, this is a very, very important issue uh, in, um, in, in the upcoming elections. And we may think of it as not being something that is that formidable, uh, but actually it's something that could make a uh, real difference. In terms of gauging uh, Asian Americans, it's a very, very rapidly growing community, a community that's adding an enormous number of voters uh, every year, particularly in swing states, but neither party is reaching out to them very much. And on slide 22, you can see that 23% of Asian Americans say in the last two years they've been contacted by the Democratic Party, only 17% by the Republican Party. Uh, even among Democrats, only 29% say the Democrats have contacted them. And even among Asian Americans who consider themselves Republican, only 37% say that the Republican Party has uh, contacted them. This is a largely untapped voting block open to a conversation from both parties. And as we see on slide 23, you have less than a fifth of the independents in that key swing voter group that make up almost a third of Asian American voters who say they have been contacted. On slide 24, one of the most interesting findings we had is uh, that while um, Asian American voters are very bilingual, um, we find that in-language assistance could make a big difference in voting. And this is something that really hasn't been paid enough attention to. 17% of our interviewers, uh, of our respondents, did the interview in another language. 73% of them said that they speak another language at home, and 12% of them said that language has been a barrier in the South in voting. On this graph, you see 22% who say they are more likely to vote if there were in-language assistance available. And that jumps to 38 to 39% among older Korean, Chinese, and Vietnamese uh, voters which is the next slide, slide 25. 
So in-language assistance in the voting booth could make a big difference in terms of mobilizing Asian American voters, and um, we haven't seen enough attention uh, paid to that. On slide 26, we asked uh, people, uh, do you speak another language at home? And as you can see, 73% said they did, and it's a variety of languages. On slide 27, we asked people, why do you vote? And they said, uh, and this was in 2008, and they said they voted for change. They voted because they liked Barack Obama, a feeling that has only solidified since then. And they voted because they felt it was their civic duty. When we asked people why they didn't vote, uh, and 17% had said they did not vote as a registered voter, another 12%, by the way, said they uh, refused to tell us, uh, 36% said they weren't eligible. Um, people also said that they were out of the country, that they had no time. Uh, but a very substantial number also said they didn't know enough about the candidates, weren't interested, didn't understand the process, had a language barrier. So if you add those categories together, you're talking about a substantial number um, who could be engaged. Um, and again, this overwhelming conclusion that we're coming from in this study is that this is a swing population that has been ignored and uh, by both parties, really, and that both parties have an argument and could benefit from engaging this community. On the next slide, um, the last thing we looked at is their potential impact. And we looked at it by some key states as well where we did oversamples so we could really look at the Asian American community in some of the states that have the fastest growing populations and some of the states that will be the closest in the upcoming election. Again, while Asian Americans have traditionally voted, uh, historically voted, um, uh, a lean Democratic, there's still a third that are independent, almost a third who don't know very much about Romney, and a half that are dissatisfied with um, President Obama's job performance. So this is a community that really has some large swing elements to it. Interestingly, in the past, this is a community that has voted more on the basis of candidates and issues. Um, and so, again, participation and dialogue with this community can make a big difference. So we just picked a couple of states to show you, but Nevada, a state that looks like it could be uh, extremely close. Um, you see here the ballot in Nevada, and you see here in a close election that uh, Asian Americans, if they voted by a 25-point margin for um, President Obama, and that margin, of course, could increase depending on what the campaigns do, that could produce a 9,000-vote margin uh, for Obama. That could be the margin of victory in Nevada. And similarly, in Virginia, a state that is really changing rapidly, has both a, a key Senate race, as does Nevada, <laughs> as well as, <clears throat> excuse me, key presidential. You see, again, a 34-point margin. If we project that out, um, that could be a 47,000-vote margin for Obama uh, that comes out of Virginia in a state that could be very, very close. The last thing we have, and we won't go through them, is a set of graphs that break it out by individual groups. Our, um, what we want to emphasize today is uh, the similarities, uh, but we thought that that would be a, a rich resource for uh, you all. So to summarize in uh, three points, then, this is a very – Asian Americans are a very important and fast-growing racial group. They can make a key difference in, difference in a number of quotes. In the states, presidentially, Senate-wide, and in redistricted congressional races. <laughs> While this group is leaning Democratic right now, there's a very, very substantial proportion of the Asian-American community that's up for grabs. And this is a substantial community uh, that where there is a dialogue to be had, both in terms of Romney defining himself <laughs> excuse me, and on... Uh, foreign policy and economic issues. So on that note, um, let me turn it to the next speakers to talk about um, what's going on in the ground. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mi Mo. I'm the President and Executive Director for the Asian American Justice Center. 
Uh, we are, together with our uh, three other affiliates, uh, form the Center for Advancing Justice. Uh, we're a um, uh, affiliation of human rights and civil rights organization uh, working all across the country um, here in Washington, D.C., as well as with uh, our office, uh, our affiliate in Chicago, uh, Los Angeles, and San Francisco, um, working on behalf of Asian Americans uh, on uh, human rights and civil rights. <laughs> um, we're very excited about this voter survey and the results. We've always known from a uh, policy advocacy perspective that our communities have been largely ignored. Uh, while we are a very diverse community, um, uh, the demographics uh, are confirming that we are uh, diverse ethnically within our own community, but we now also, also are very diverse in terms of uh, where we live uh, all across this country. And in fact, uh, contrary to the traditional thinking that Asian Americans uh, have always been uh, um, majority in the gateway cities and states on either the east or west coast, we're finding that there are remarkable Asian American, sizable Asian American populations in other areas and in growing areas, both uh, in the north, northeast, and in the south. What's really, really interesting about uh, um, the polling results for us is the fact that the community, um, our community, will vote right for candidates uh, who are uh, engaging them. Uh, will vote for uh, are willing to vote for individuals who will engage them on their issues. Um, and so, from my perspective, um, having worked with a community that has felt largely ignored, both in the policy arena, but if you look at the democratic process. It's been difficult to make the argument to both political parties and candidates uh, to embed this population uh, as part of their core strategy on how they engage and mobilize the various communities. And I think the survey results have confirmed uh, that neither uh, parties um, actually um, are doing a very good job. And in fact, as a uh, one of the uh, the fastest right growing. A racial group in this country uh, who tend to be much younger uh, with much more opportunities uh, to be engaged and that once we are engaged we actually do turn out to vote um, and so I, I believe that um, actually the numbers identifying what percentages uh, are, uh, are leaning Democrats or leaning Republicans are not as important I don't think as uh, 31 percent, 27 percent, and 31 percent, right? Those are the independent uh, undecided. I think that the 31, 27, 31 percent are the opportunities uh, that are represented by our growing uh, community. Uh, and the fact that uh, almost 60 percent of, of our independent voters have uh, not gained the attention right, of either um, political parties really is an affirmation yet again that um, we have been a largely ignored community, uh, but uh, given the demographic, demographic realities, I believe that uh, the message uh, should be that uh, some engagement of this community in the short term, uh, some meaningful engagement of this community in the short term uh, will very much result in some long-term impact. Uh, and those are my observations for now, and I will turn this over to Christine. Hi, everyone. Um, this is Christine Chen. I'm the Acting Executive Director for Asian and Pacific Islander American Vote. Um, it is very exciting to have this type of data that allows us to deepen our understanding of the Asian American and Pacific Islander voters. Um, APAC Vote is a national nonpartisan organization that works with partners to mobilize Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in electoral and civic participation at the national, state, and local levels. Essentially, we are focused on developing new capacity to do this work with each of our local partner organizations. Racial and ethnic barriers in immigration laws have historically prevented a large majority of Asians from becoming naturalized U.S. citizens and engaging in this democratic process. But in the last 60 years, we have seen positive changes, and the data supports that the fact that the Asian American and Pacific Islander community are ready to exercise their right to vote. 
if we do take a snapshot of the states from the various regions with emerging AAPI communities, we have, for example, Virginia, where the Asian American population increased almost 70% over the last decade, making up almost 7% of the total population. AAPIs now make up a significant amount of the population in two of the most populous counties, Fairfax County um, with 18% and Loudoun County with 15%. In addition, there is a sizable community located in the Hampton Roads area. Now, if we look at the history, in the 2006 U.S. Senate race, Asian Americans made up 3% of the electorate where U.S. Senator Jim Webb won with a margin of less than 1%. 56% of eligible AAPIs in Virginia are registered to vote, but that is increasing. Due to the changing demographics in Virginia, all candidates need to take this opportunity to engage with this new base of voters. Now, you know, with our communities in the southeast, Florida is home to over half a million AAPIs. In addition to being a key presidential state, there will be nine key U.S. House races, including a new congressional seat due to reapportionment, and the entire state legislature is on the ballot this year. AAPIs in the state are also concerned about the economy and the, house, and the housing crisis. But in addition, community advocates have met with legislative resistance in their attempts to repeal an archaic state law, the Alien Land Law of 1926, which bans land ownership by AAPIs. Voters are looking for candidates to listen to their demands. In the heading west, Nevada's AAPI population has continued phenomenal growth with an increase of over 116%. This state is close to becoming a majority-minority state. With the new congressional district as a result of reapportionment and key House seats and state legislative races on the ballot, AAPIs should garner significant attention from candidates seeking or courting the AAPI community. For instance, the AAPI population of 9% or more are present in eight state house districts. Every vote counts, especially in a tight election. If AAPIs vote at the same levels as they did, it could mean increasing margins for the party they prefer. 47,000 more votes in Virginia than last election, 33,000 more in Florida, and 9,000 more in Nevada. But we are urging candidates to engage this community, a rapidly growing voting bloc in the conversation. We're working with dozens of community-based groups to get AAPIs involved in the process, but locally we've been uh, barely contacted by either party. So now we are challenging all political parties and candidates to start the conversation with the Asian American Pacific Islander voters. Meet with community leaders and actively invite this community to participate in your town halls or listening sessions. Develop those relationships so you can be a better public servant who understands the diverse needs of your constituents. Translate campaign materials and develop messages and communication plans that resonate and is inclusive to this base of voters. Incorporate this new electorate into your field plans and activities. Take these steps in helping us ensure that the AAPI community can fully participate in and have access to the democratic process. API Vote essentially envisions a world that is inclusive, fair, and collaborative, and where Asian Americans and Pacific Islander communities are self-determined, empowered, and engaged. We look forward to seeing these positive steps by the parties and the candidates. And Toby, I guess we'll go ahead and then turn it over to you for Q&A. So, quick, quick uh, reminder, uh, please press star one on your number pad if you'd like to ask a question. Uh, you can do that at any time. Uh, but this would be a good time to do it. And I think we have um, some questions in the queue already. So, uh, Bridget, should we start with the, the first reporter question? Certainly. And we'll go first to Aziz Hanif of India Board. Aziz, go ahead, Aziz, with India Board. This is a South Asian newspaper in the U.S., and I find that all of the panelists are of East Asian origin. Uh, there are no South Asians on the panel. Of course, we've got our indefatigable Toby there. But what I'm, my point is that you all did acknowledge, and I agree with you, the point is well taken that APIs are not a monolithic uh, demographic. How did you all get to the South Asian uh, would-be voters? Are there any details you can provide uh, regarding Indian Americans, specifically South Asians, etc.? And how do you all incorporate South Asians uh, in the whole demographic? So, Linda, do you want to talk a little bit about um, 
some of the, the Indian American breakouts at least from top line? Um, and I um, and it may have been that just that I gave them too quickly, and I apologize for that because uh, we actually uh, cited them. So Indian Americans were part, uh, Southeast Asians were part of the sto- of the population proportion to their presence in the Asian American community, and we provided in the um, in the appendix for you all of the Indian American numbers uh, broken out. Also, you'll notice in the language slide, one of the major languages spoken at home is Hindi. Uh, what we find is that the Indian American community, which of course is, is a subset of the Southeast Asian community, is one of the strongest uh, for Obama right now. Um, and one of the most democratic. 65% identify as democratic. Um, they are 76% vote for the president. Um, 66% vote for the Democrats for Congress. And as I mentioned, this is the group that is the most positive about the president's job performance numbers, 63%, and the highest in their favorability toward the president, 85%, along with Japanese Americans. They are also the group um, relatively most negative about uh, Romney, 56% negative, but a fifth are still um, uncertain about him. So there's still opportunities in that community. Um, We also found in terms of contacts that in the Indian American community, uh, 30% had been contacted by the Democrats and 15% by the Republicans. So still a huge number of people who are not um, being uh, reached out to by either party. Any any particular reason, uh, any rationale for the fact that uh, Indian Americans seem to be uh, uh, gung-ho on Obama? Uh, we could speculate, but I really, um, you know, they... Uh, the things that we see in the data are that, number one, they're more democratic in their leaning. <laughs> Some of that may be cause and effect. And secondly, that they are more likely to think that um, uh, Obama is doing a good job, and that's one of the real drivers. Uh, just a quick housekeeping, Toby. If you could just send me those figures, I'll appreciate it. Yes, actually sure. you, have them in, uh, you have them in the presentation. They're in the back of the presentation. Aziz, I'll make sure that you get that. And uh, it's probably worth noting that uh, that, there, that there are quite a few South Asians involved in the, in the effort. We have uh, Mini Timaraju, who's a board member at APIA Found, and, and of course myself as well. So, so we'll make sure that you get all those materials as well as we need to. Thanks. I appreciate it. And also on the research team, I might add. Yes, which is historic, frankly. I just want to clarify that um, this is me more. I know, Celinda, you meant to say South Asian as being inclusive. Yes, uh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, And uh, so I just want to clarify that. I know our friend from the South Asian community knows that, but uh, some of the other callers might think that we mistakenly label them as Southeast Asian when they're really South Asian. Yes, thank you. Great. Do we have some more questions? Certainly. We'll go next to Frank Bass of Bloomberg. All right. Hi. Apologies that this has already been uh, been asked and answered, but uh, do you guys have the percentage of uh, registered API voters in uh, as as a percent of the total in Florida, Nevada, Virginia, and Illinois? Christine, do you have that at the tip of your fingers? Right. Hold on one second. Okay, so um, Florida, the registration rate of Asian Americans is 47%. And you said Nevada, um, that's 48%. And Virginia, we're at 56%. And that's according to the 2010 Voting and Registration Supplement to the current population survey. Okay, so that's 40. Okay, great. Thank you. And we'll move next to Jean Song of Mendel News Service. Hi. Um, I just have a quick question. In your survey methodology, is there a reason why um, 
unregistered Asian American citizens weren't polled? No, we wanted to look. I mean, there's no reason. We just wanted to look at voters uh, because, obviously, if you look at unregistered, the, the numbers would be even higher. So we wanted to look at the key subgroup of voters uh, and people that were already registered. Um, <clears throat> so not, not particularly, but even among this um, more um, narrow um, definition or tougher definition, if you will, uh, we see that this is such a key voting group, and, and so that's why we wanted to look at it that way. Well, this is me more. I think that um, that question speaks to sort of what is the purpose of the poll, and um, I know Toby had mentioned earlier uh, earlier that, you know, this is a nonpartisan survey uh, aimed at to discover what is going on with this constituency group and to better educate candidates, um, parties, and other, um, actually other nonprofits and entities. Uh, to care more about um, our community of voters. Um, we know that AAPIs have been largely ignored, as I mentioned before, by candidates and parties and groups concerned about civic engagement. And we wanted to um, demonstrate, uh, to, to identify some ways to educate them about the importance of our community and the needs of our community. So, you know, our hope is that the poll will lead to greater civic participation by Asian Americans. Uh, so that our diverse interests are better represented in government and in the democratic process generally. Great, thank you. And we'll move next to Paul Bedard of Washington Examiner. Hey, Celinda, what? Why is it that there isn't much democratic outreach to the uh, to the community? I mean, that was Bill Clinton's whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is interesting because there have been leaders in previous, um, <coughs> um, you know, Karl Rove also launched yeah. a major initiative at the end of the Bush years in terms of outreach. So it seems like uh, both parties are, paying, uh, are not paying as much attention. Of course, the Obama uh, campaign has set up a structure. Uh, but I think what this is saying is that um, both parties have a lot of work to do and a lot of gain that they can get by uh, reaching out to these voters more. And does Obama have an inherent advantage being uh, from Hawaii and is, you know, he has Asian roots? Uh, that may be the origin of it. Uh, he has an inherent advantage <laughs> that is rooted in two things, being democratic uh -huh. and um, being so well personally liked. But his roots may be part of that for sure. And then finally, did they, do they want to give money to Obama? Is there any talk of uh, uh, We didn't money for that. Okay, thanks. And next we have Rita Janora Atkins of Asian Fortune. Well, thank you so much. Uh, yes, I have just a very practical question. Uh, would you have some um, um, available um, the, in, uh, this information in printed copy that we could get uh, a copy of, uh, or perhaps online? Um, yeah, this is this is Toby really quickly. If you if you send me a quick email, I can I can get you documents. And, is this Toby uh, Charter? That's right. Okay. That's right. Uh, How uh, are you? Uh, uh, okay, I think I got your. And the quick question is that, uh, okay, uh, if the if the Asian Pacific American community are largely have largely been ignored by uh, by either party. Uh, do you have suggestions as to how these parties could be made aware uh, through the survey uh, uh, about this fact and that uh, the advantages that they could uh, have if they do more outreach uh, effort toward uh, Asian Pacific American voters? But sort of reversing the question to what can Asian Pacific American communities, you know, do to sort of kind of say, hey, 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 we're here. Um, uh, any practical things that you might have learned in your survey regarding that question? Hi, this is Christine Chen uh, with API Vote. Mm -hmm. um, we are we do have plans. Um, this group that has uh, conducted the survey to reach out to both mm -hmm. parties to make sure that they understand the findings and how they can actually best utilize that and to encourage um, and to have advocates within each of the parties to encourage um, doing outreach to the Asian American and Pacific Islander voters. Um, in addition, um, you know, a lot of our local nonprofit um, partners 
are mm-hmm. also going to be reaching out to the local candidates to also engage them later on in voter education efforts and candidate forums. And if I may just follow this up quickly, uh, 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 Christine, you, you do have a plan of, for action, okay, an outreach towards the, uh, 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 the various elements in the Asian Pacific American community. But my, my curiosity is that how do members down at the community level uh, 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 could be could be sort of kind of drawn to, to participate, to be there in your plan? Uh, for the purpose precisely that this whole survey is about, which is to gain more visibility and participation, hopefully, in the voting <laughs> process. Uh, what are some of the practical uh, the things that perhaps you guys are planning this project or this program and this outreach design and all that to be into the community, but from the community level, from the elements of the, uh, the, the participating in the various uh, part, uh, members of the community, uh, what are the practical uh, ways that um, – this, uh, members of these communities uh, would respond. I mean, could be made to respond more uh, positively and just as they do in other events celebrating their culture, et cetera, et cetera. But for the participation in the political process, what are some of the practical things that you guys have learned? Well, like, for instance, now we have some data in regards to how to best reach Asian American voters, where they get their information. Okay. Um, so Besides television, uh, there was a large percentage that are u- utilizing the Internet as well as newspapers. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now we know how to um, allocate resources and to partner uh, with those entities. Um, hopefully then the campaigns also recognize that, and they will actually invest dollars in terms of utilizing those avenues to reach our community as well. Um, mm-hmm. Right now, APIVO, we're in their phase of – conducting trainings um, to our local okay. partners and local nonprofits, so mm-hmm. that way they can actually create a plan about how to effectively register voters and then educate them and then ultimately turn them out and pr- um, also engage in election protection programs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I get the picture. Thank you so much. And next we have Peter Sherman of New America Media. Hi, I have a couple of quick questions. The first one is just uh, very practical. How many languages were used in the poll, to this poll? Uh, we translated it, I believe, into five languages. Is that right, no, Shelter, three. David? No, three three additional three. languages Sorry. besides English. Uh, Chinese, languages. Vietnamese. Yes, Chinese, Vietnamese, and Korean. Okay. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm also curious about um, the – the sort of voter ID and other voter suppression laws that are being passed in certain states and whether you guys got a sense of how this might be impacting the uh, Asian American vote. We did not pull on that, um, but I think the folks can answer their views on it. Okay. Well, we know for the fact that um, you know, there's a large, already a large undecided population that has not been touched, right, by um, or appealed to or attended to by by any candidates or political parties. Um, our uh, our task, we've always believed that our people vote, uh, and what this what this poll has confirmed is that they vote because they're moved, right, by wanting to make changes. Uh, they vote because they feel that it's their civic duty to do so. They vote when candidates touch them, and in particular when candidates or individuals touch them on the issues that matter to them. Um, and, and knowing that this is how the, our community behaves when it comes to participating in the democratic process, um, we're concerned that, that all these voter suppression efforts actually are yet just another additional barrier, right, on top of the, the – initial barrier of totally being ignored and not being asked to really uh, participate fully, uh, to have the information about the different parties and different candidates to be able to make a decision. So um, already, I mean, we, we just feel like these voter suppression issues uh, are yet just another barrier uh, that is going to potentially be chilling uh, to our, people, uh, our people's uh, enthusiasm or commitment to going to the polls, which means that from our perspective, we – uh, now have an additional burden to do more um, 
uh, voter education about what their rights are uh, in terms of being able to fully utilize the enfranchisement. Thank you. And next we have Vanessa White of Zen Dong Daily News. Hi, thanks for taking the call. Um, I hope this question isn't too far uh, off topic, but I'm actually I'm wondering about uh, third-party groups and whether or not you have any information on uh, what their outreach efforts are like uh, in the community or even their impact on the community as a large uh, portion of the community is undecided. Hello? Yeah, we. I'm, I will let the groups answer that. We didn't do any polling on that. So are you asking in regards – oh, this is Christine Chen with API Vote. Um, are you asking, like, in terms of um, unions or other um, entities like that, or can you clarify what you mean by third party? Yeah, I mean, I guess unions, you know, anything that's not necessarily uh, specifically Democratic or specifically Republican, uh, it's just there's a, as was pointed out, there's a large undecided population, so I'm wondering, um, you know, who is targeting that population, if if anybody at all? I think that at this point, this is me more. Um, I think that that, that large untouched uh, population is an opportunity for for whoever uh, is willing to exercise the leadership and invest the resources uh, to really engage that community. And it could be a third-party candidate. It could be, you know, I mean, I, I think that the implications uh, for this uh, goes far beyond um, uh, voter uh, behavior, right? I mean, it really speaks to um, how to engage this community, whether you're a corporate uh, entity uh, you're looking for some engagement with a particular community on um, uh, on your brand. I mean, I think there's some implications for that because in all sectors, our community to a large extent has has been ignored. And uh, in the political arena, I think that 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 large um, undecided independent voting bloc that's not been attended to by anybody um, is a pretty great opportunity for just about anybody who is willing to invest the resources to engage that community. And just a couple of quick notes is that, uh, you know, there is this, there is this independent movement that's been in place. So there are a lot of, um, advocacy groups like the ones represented on this call, both at the national level as well as in many different markets across the country. It's probably also interesting, you know, without getting into too much detail here, we could probably talk more about it offline, but also just what the different administrations have been doing, uh, at the federal level, right? Um, um, both President Bush, Clinton, and Obama have uh, signed together a, a White House initiative addressing this population specifically, and you can probably look at some of the outreach patterns there as well. But, but uh, if you want to talk about specific groups, we could probably uh, talk more offline about that as well. Okay, thank you, Tony. And next we'll move to Carlos Gayo of Asian American Press. Hi, first of all, I want to thank um, Christine and me for all the awesome, endless, tireless work you've done across the years. Um, my question to you all is, it's a little bit of a spin, but looking at Asian candidates uh, as opposed to the electorate, to the voters, what suggestions do you have for Asian candidates in districts in which normally they're not, you know, the majority of the, of the voters are not Asian, they tend to be you know, older um, mainstream voters, what suggestions do you have for candidates in trying to reach the mainstream, particularly the blocks that vote at highest numbers? Well, um, speaking as somebody who's in recovery from uh, political life, um, this is me more. Uh, I think that um, the strategy is no different, right? Uh, I mean, as an as a Asian American, uh, a former Asian American candidate, um, the strategy for our reach into all communities um, are the same. Deep engagement, an opportunity to talk about the issues that are important for them, permits the public, the voting public, to evaluate you on the merits of what you stand for and whether or not you comport with their positions, and in particular, whether or not you comport with their values. Uh, and if they, if they identify with those elements, then they find you to be an attractive candidate. Um, you know, as an Asian American candidate in an area that was, uh, I'd say predominantly, largely uh, uh, non-Asian American, um, I found that I was appealing. Uh, actually, uh, had people who crossed over the party line to vote for me. 
uh, because they believed in the things that, you know, that I stood for. The irony here is that I think as a, as a and, and, and it will be interesting to get a sense from uh, candidates of color what their experience has been, but um, uh, in my experience and among some of my um, elected uh, friends who are um, of color, when we put together a campaign strategy, we embed into that campaign strategy the different uh, racial or ethnic communities as part of the core strategy. So we tailor outreach to the different communities that we represent because we know those communities well and we want to, in very authentic and genuine ways, um, engage them. Um, what my experience has been is that what I practice uh, as an individual of color who recognizes and understands the need to um, engage the different, uh, the different communities, that most mainstream candidates have a really hard time embedding into their core strategy, right, outreach efforts uh, into the different racial communities. And in particular, um, I think that they have a really hard time if the, the different communities go beyond the you know, Spanish-speaking community because I think it's easier to translate something into Spanish. But once you have to go the next level down of doing the analysis to see how many Asian American populations, how many different ethnic groups are in your area, I think when people get to that point, they sort of just dropped off. And that's unfortunate. Uh, it's unfortunate for them because a little bit of investment, as this poll is indicating, actually could reap some pretty long-term impact. Thank you. We have time for just another question or two. Um, so let's try to wrap up. All right, that one of our next questions will come from Yasmeet Raj of Hindustan Times. Yeah, hi. I have a question which is related to uh, a question that was asked earlier about the Indian Americans. Uh, I was wondering if you were able to poll the reasons why Indian Americans were so keen on Obama and the Democrats. You said uh, Indians some, among everyone, uh, all the communities polled, Indian Americans scored the highest, uh, uh, were most positive on Obama and the Democratic Party. Were you able to poll the reasons for this? No. I mean, uh, we know that they have the highest uh, job performance numbers and the highest numbers in terms of favorability, but no, we did not explore the differences between the groups. We were looking more to characterize the overall um, power of this voting bloc. So no, we didn't. We didn't have a chance to look at that. Would you like to speculate? Uh, no, I'm a soldier. I don't speculate. But maybe others on the call would like to speculate. No, but what I will do is I'll make sure that uh, if you just send me a quick email, I'll reply back with uh, all the details that we do have. That uh, okay. at least you can you can break down the objective data that that does exist here. I have the data. Uh, you sent me the presentation, so I have the data. Yeah, but I think we might have some more information. Okay, okay, great. I'll, I'll do that. I'll send you a mail. Thanks. Thanks. And then the last question will come from John Margato of NSPAA. And, John, your line is open. And Mr. Morgan, your mute line might your line might be muted. Please check your mute function. Up here, maybe if there's another if there's hearing, another cue. Yep, hearing no response. We'll move to Chai Sir Chan of A A L D E S. Hi, can everyone hear me? Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, my name is Chi Sir from Aldef. Um thank you for having this call. I just have two quick questions. Um, besides Florida, Illinois, Nevada, and Virginia, what other states did you conduct this poll in? And also, how were the voters found, basically? If so, for example, did you survey them after they finished voting in the primaries, or was it a no, different situation? really good question. So this is people who are registered voters, and the survey is nationwide. The oversamples that we did, so that if we did a nationwide survey, we could break out California, but we couldn't break out other states. Um, so what we did was we did oversamples. That is, we interviewed extra people in Florida, Nevada, Virginia, and Illinois so that we could, um, uh, you know, actually break out those individual states. 
So this is a nationwide survey uh, where the proportion of the population is proportionate, uh, you know, the number of people in any given state is proportionate to the population in that state. And then we did an oversample. And these were people interviewed on the phone, and they were people that are Asian American and then re-identified as Asian American in the survey. Um, so uh, it wasn't exit polling or anything like that. It's polling, and it isn't people that actually necessarily voted. These are people who are registered to vote and then could be potential voters. Some of them voted. Some of them have not in the past. Thank you. Thank you. Great. I want to thank everyone for uh, for. Hello? And I do apologize. It looks like Toby's line dropped. Oh, all right. This is me, Moore. I want to thank everyone for being on the call. Thank you all for uh, your great questions, and uh, thank you to Celinda and your team for uh, making the time to be on the call with us. Thank you very much. We'd be delighted to follow up. And if you just contact Toby, if anybody has additional questions or whatever, as you know, Christine, if you just uh, contact Toby or contact you, uh, then we would be glad to get people the information that they need. Also, um, this is Christine Chen from ACAVO. We also wanted to remind everyone that we will be hosting a in-person briefing on Monday, May 7th at 4.30 p.m. at SEIU with Celinda Lake. Um, so if there are additional questions, uh, we welcome everyone to come as well. More information will be forwarded to you. Thank you. And again, that does close today's conference call. We'd like to thank you for your participation.